All right, I got to make some changes here on the uh, shuttle. Where I had the shuttle in here, and the shuttle was running very hot, even when it wasn't doing any video rendering. And uh, on that little shelf that I made, which I took pulled out, and we're going to have to. Uh, we made some changes. We put the um, security monitor on the headboard here and it was sitting on top of the uh, DVR for the uh, security system. I just got the shuttle laying on top of here now. Um, I got to connect up the uh, Cat5 and uh, I want to make sure the mouse wire and the keyboard wires will reach over to here because I'm only using one keyboard right now uh, and we're using two separate mice so it appears that they'll all reach but we got to do here is I have to make a shelf for the power supply um, which is going to go on the side of the cabinet here and you know near the window that's the only place. I was going to put the shuttle out here, would get a lot of air, but the shuttle, uh, the shelf would go right up against the window blind. And it's in, not really a good place for it. So I have a, uh, a USB um, extension cable I had for years, if I needed to, to extend the mouse or the keyboard. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, what I think I might do is uh, keep the shuttle mouse over here. That's the mouse for the uh, security system. Keep the shuttle mouse over here, and when I'm ready to use it, just bring it over to here and use it on the pad, because I only use one computer at a time. It's a real pain in the neck. Uh, in a week or maybe two weeks, I'll be able to buy that transfer switch for the HDMI. Can't do it this week. I hope you all had a good Mother's Day. Um, let me show you the power supply here. This here is a 6.3 amp power supply. The one that I had on here that I got from Jim was running so hot you couldn't get your hands on it. When this shuttle is rendering, it gets very hot. It's got two fans up here. So uh, we want to keep everything clear. This power supply is over 6.3 amps, 19 volts is what it calls for. I got this from Jim, and it is 7 inches long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on the side of the desk over here. But I got to make a little bracket for it, a little wooden bracket, so it'll be on the outside. This pack runs lukewarm, so there's no problem with that. The reason I have to do that is because I originally had the power pack tucked up into here. And uh, if I left it up there, I would have a power cord coming down like this in the way. I got a lot of cords now, as you can see, the security system. It's a real rat's nest here. So I, I don't want anything where I'm going to be hanging myself in wires so with this mounted here I'll be able to droop the cord down go down and into the back of the shuttle so that's what I'm going to do here so I'm going out to the bench outside and I'm going to make a um, a bracket out of wood to hold this like this it'll actually be this way so that this is the power cord coming out and uh, this is the power going in over here so it'll be sitting like this flat against the desk only it'll be down below the phone um, so there's no no problem with the uh, with the cord reaching so let's go outside we'll have a small project to do which don't know how the audio is going to be out there. There's a little breeze out there, but we'll see. So unfortunately, uh, the idea was right, but uh, I didn't think the shuttle would overheat being in the cubicle confined area. 
but that's just the way it is. So we got to make something for this power supply here. Whether I'll take it off of this or start new, I don't know yet. So we're going to go looking for some wood, which I don't have very much of. I have small pieces here and there, but I don't have much. And we'll uh, we'll make it so that this power supply can just lay on the side of the desk. I just don't want to make a regular little shelf. It'll end up falling off, so it's going to have a lip on it, and also a lip on each end so it doesn't slide forward or back. I'll be back. I do have some wood to choose from. I don't have very much wood. Everything's very, very small, but what I got to make does not require very much wood, but I'm trying to avoid getting the table saw out and having to cut more wood just for this little thing. So I'm going to go through this. I might even have some more down here. That's why I hide my small pieces. We'll figure something out. All right, we got seven inches by two inches. The power supply is about six and three quarter inches long. Power supply is going to be sitting on end, not laying flat. With the 19 volt area a cord coming out on the other on this side. Okay. And what we're going to do here, we're going to secure a piece here, but we're not using this heavy stock. I think we'll use some quarter inch, or maybe we'll use some, some of this half inch plywood here. And we'll have it like this. And the power supply is in here, like that. There'll be a lip on this side, okay? also but not this high this is just so I can put a couple screws in it and go into the desk I want to use this kind of stock because I got one inch one and one eighth inch sheetrock screws and the desk wood is only three quarter inch thick so if I use Luan I'm gonna have the points of the screws coming out on the inside of the desk and I hang my papers there and stuff inside with passwords and stuff, so I don't want to have a problem with that. So this is half inch stock, so it'll definitely give me, I can put the screws right in here. So just a couple of screws, and I'll put them in by hand because it's close to the window. I'm not going to be able to drive them in with the drill. There's just not enough room. When you live in a mobile home, I'll tell you, every inch counts. So we're going to do all this cutting here by hand. We're not going to get this table saw out. Which, uh, we're just going to cut it with the uh, small skill saw. I lost my uh, carriage bolt, the little short stubby carriage bolt that goes into that square hole there. That fell out a few years ago somewhere. I can never find it. So I have no idea what I'm going to put in there. I think it's probably a quarter twenty stubby one. I don't have it, and no idea it could be in this yard anywhere. But anyways, we're going to get started on this with this little saw here, which I've had for many, many, many years. Now we cut this little piece here first. Let's see if we can get my saw in there without it stopping. Just a little bit of cutting that I have to do. It's not worth getting the uh, table saw out. I just got to cut this off by hand, that's not a problem. So we got a two inch by seven inch piece. 
and that will be perfect and we'll have a side on it here and a lip on it the other side so it won't fall out onto the floor okay we'll trim it off Everything I do is rough carpentry. I'm no cabinet maker. After all, it's only a little holder for the power supply. Also keeps the power supply in open air more than it would be stuck in that cubicle I showed you in the video earlier. Not going to bother staining it. Not getting that fancy. I got a four inch high backboard here okay that's going to be screwed into the desk so we're going to cut this off now this is a little less i have to work with what i got so it's not seven inches but it don't matter it's only going to hold this shelf to the side of the desk with only two screws not glued to the desk i can make changes later It don't matter if I cut up some of this workbench, it's all rotted away anyways. But I don't think I'll hurt it. I like using a table saw better, but I didn't do too bad of a job. We don't want too big of a nail to go in here because it will split going in to this edge of the plywood. It will almost certainly split. Um, I don't think we have to pre-drill these, but we got to remember we want this side now, I think now I don't want to take my two inch width away. I want it mounted this way. Okay. All right, so Okay, so that's going to be this way. So that we still have the full 2 inch width. This will go against the desk. And then there'll be another small lip, which is probably going to be thin plywood, just to keep it from falling off. And then I'll put something on the edge, or maybe a nail or something, a finished nail on each end, to keep the power pack from sliding off when you happen to tug on the cord. You know how it goes when you're in a crowded area. So, the first thing I want to do here is like I always do with small nails, I didn't bring my damn hammer out. All right. I'd forget my head if it wasn't fastened to my neck. Now, there's an estimation here. These are pretty big. We're using, uh, not using the framing hammer, we're using my 16 ounce hammer. We're going to come out to the middle lamination here on the plywood. But I'll tell you, these nails look a little bit big. I'm afraid I'm going to bend the damn nail over. That's a little too much. 
bench is so damn rotten I can't do anything on it anymore. It bounces like a rubber ball. They ain't buying no damn wood, not at these prices. Well, I went in a little too far on that. I want to pre-nail this. Before I put the glue on, otherwise it'll be a mess. Okay, that's just the point coming through is what I want. quarter inch wood. This is half inch. It's too damn hairy working on it like that. I think I only need two nails if I glue it. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now we'll go like this. As I said, this is a little shorter, but it's only the backboard that holds it to the desk. So now we'll get the glue if I can get it on there. Let's see if we can get it on. That's a flat surface. Okay. Let's see if I can get it out. You can say this was frozen if you remember the last project I was working on. Coming out, they don't need much. It's not easy when I'm working uh, when you're working on a on a so-called rotten bench. Vice in the big shed, but that's not gonna do me any good out here. Not bad. Not bad for a half-ass goat. Clear. I always worried about it coming out and pulling the, you know, splitting the wood and coming out the side. But it didn't. Not bad. So it's going to be like this. Here's the desk. Be like that. There'll be two holes here. Spread that glue out. Of course, if I put a square on that, which I don't have out here with me, it's off. But I'm not worried about it. Only I will know that, and you. Let me go get, take some more measurements, make the other piece here, and then I'll drill the two holes in here. A little change of plans here. If I was to put this up here, First of all, this is one inch. Ply, this, this plywood is a uh, half inch, so we got a half inch lip here. That's still not going to prevent this thing from toppling over onto the floor and getting me all upset. <laughs> and if I mount it this way to fit perfectly in there, well, you're suffocating the power supply with plywood on each side. We're going to do a change of plans here. We got an old paint stirrer. We can sand it down a little bit. Piece of dowel, 
I don't have any other dowel. If you work with what we got, we're going to drill a hole and put a dowel here and put a dowel here and have it come up to the height of the power supply. That will keep it from toppling over. It's just a matter of getting the right size drill that this will fit into the hole and not be on an angle. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to get at my drill press in that damn shed, so I got to drill freehand. And we're going to drill with the $10 DeWalt drill that I bought at Jewett City. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Before I do that, try to clean this dowel up a little bit. And we've got to use a couple of sections out of here. If I can find a, a clean piece of doweling, all right. If not, we'll use this. Don't matter. We got stain on this side from that shelf, that paint that I had to mix up. We don't waste anything. If we got a piece of wood or material we can use, I'll use it. Things are too expensive to go out and buy this, buy that. If I got something here, I'll make it work. The idea of the shelf in the, um, for the shuttle, I guess was a good one, but uh, I didn't realize that that shuttle ran very, very warm and it was not doing anything but just watching YouTube videos. It wasn't doing any rendering on it. Now when I do HD rendering, it does run quite warm and Jim said that's normal. However, <laughs> it was running warmer, actually hot, more so than when it was running full tilt rendering HD videos. All right, I'll be back. I gotta take some measurements, get the drill press, bring the drill out here, not the drill press, the drill. I found a, uh, a new dowel. It calls for a 15 60 fourths drill bit. The closest I've got is one quarter. So I drilled a one quarter in a scrap piece here. She fits quite nicely. Of course, it's on an angle because I, I'm not using a drill press. But we're going to drill a couple of holes in this stock here. Let's see if I can do that. Get you a little closer here. Let's see if we can get one right about here. Estimate vertical. matter about the bench it's all rotted anyways all right I'm gonna have to change cameras here otherwise there's gonna be no more video after this I got to stop now and go in the house and get the other ZE one okay we got the other ZE one here and um, eh, not too bad don't forget it's 1564 is what it called for so it's a little bit loosey in the goosey but that's all right. There's only gonna be one here and one here. I don't think we need any more, but then I might, if I got enough room to put a peg in each here to keep them sliding, but I'm not sure yet because the cord might be in the way of that. So what I might just do is attack a little piece of thin plywood on each end of this so it doesn't slide either way if the wire happens to get tugged on a little bit. So, we'll do that, we'll set you back on the tripod, and we'll continue with this project. I gotta saw these down the lens. The first thing I gotta do before I even put those dowels in place is to drill the two holes so I can mount it on the side of the desk. So naturally we are not using a quarter inch drill for that. So. 
we're going to um, measure for the two screws that we're going to be putting in here we got to turn it this way so I'm left-handed just do a, a line here and uh, let's see we'll put this is this particular backboard here which is hold going to the side of the desk as I said it's about six and a quarter inches long so um, well let's go one inch it's not the best rule to use for this because it's pretty well worn out and very difficult for me to see but that's nothing new I'm used to working under conditions where it's hard to see all right so all we need to do is drill two one-eighth inch holes here one-eighth my drill gauge here this is how you measure for the dowel in case you ever want to know these are very handy I have a metal one of these somewhere around don't ask me where it is this is a quarter it's a little bit loosey-goosey but it's nice tidy whitey here see okay <laughs> all right so we gotta get this is uh, I think it's the odd sale special here so let's see that's 5 64ths I think I think 5 64ths would be good is my 18 volt one but pretty good all right don't know if I'm in camera maybe I should check and see can you see that no well, now you can of course my ugly head would get in the way but that's life Certainly a lot better than that damn Harbor Free. Drill ahead. Although the newer one is in a bad drill, 12 volt, but I, you can't beat DeWalt. Okay, so all we have to do is see what I got for screws. I think I might have to use an inch and five eighths, but I'm going to go look in the shed now and see. I gotta countersink these two, but I have a I have a mechanical, a hand-operated uh, countersink. It's like a screwdriver with burr on the end that I used to use all the time. But we'll probably touch it up with a large drill bit. But I'll come back on this after I find the right size screws that I'm going to need to mount that. I think the one inch is what I really need for this yes this is half inch countersunk because if I go with inch and five eighths it's going to be very hard for me to screw it in I need lots of strength to push that in so let me see something here and I'll be right back I got to get a, a Phillips screwdriver I'll be right back all right I cut two three inch pieces the width of this is two and a half so um, it's actually a hair over that not a problem so when these go into the half inch wood there's going to be enough sticking up to definitely keep it from falling off the thing so what I got to do now is to smooth out the edges I cut kind of make a cone on them so that you know it'll be no sharp edge on it when I'm taking the power supply in and out or whatever I'm doing things change on the 
computer desk quite a bit. I'm always doing something to make things better. Unfortunately, and the, um, I cannot run my Altic Lansing speaker system on the shuttle because I get a hum in there, ground loop, and I've tried it with the with the ground prong off the power pack for the shuttle, and it didn't make any difference. So I have to use those tinny on Walmart speaker brands, O N N, that I have. So. And when I'm using the shuttle, unfortunately, I have tinny sound, so I can't enjoy my music. So I got the Altic speakers system, subwoofer and everything, only running on the 7 desktop, and that's just the way it is. I cannot run two speakers. And in order to do that, I would have to switch off. I'd have to have a switch for the speaker system. So there's another switch I got to deal with. So it's just as easy to have two separate speaker systems. And there's so much mess and crowdedness over there at the um, on that desk, anyways. That unless you're right there, you have no idea how frustrating it is to get at things. I think that's a nice well-rounded tip so that could go in there and uh, this one this is the bottom so that just be flat across this one would be still using that sandpaper I got at that yard sale years ago about three years ago I guess way before the corona crap came out by the way, my wife and I, last week, got our boosters. So, if you're smart, you'll get yours. That's why this thing is never going to go away, because there's too many obstinate people that refuse to get it. And I'm not talking about ones that have medical reasons for not getting it. I don't have any problems with that. There are some that probably can't, but uh, for that reason. So, I say get vaccinated and go on with life. The hell with wearing masks. I'm so damn sick and tired of looking at people with masks. So sick of it. The world will never go back to normal unless you're vaccinated. Remember, as I said before, Polio would still be with us if it wasn't for S Dr. Salk, S-A-L-K, and his polio vaccine. And I've been vaccinated back in the 50s with that. I didn't like it. I was terrified of getting it. It was the first time I ever, well, no, it isn't the first time. When you first had to go to school, you had to be vaccinated. So, all right. So now, before I do anything with that, let's put this power pack in here. Well, <laughs> I got these screws that are going to be driven down in. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take these screws out, and they come out easy now. That's the beauty of restarting, you know, putting these things in. This one's a little hard. I didn't drive this all the way down to home yet. Um, that's the beauty of doing all this like this. I think you can hear me, it's not that windy. Um, is makes it a lot easier to mount it. And now when these screws are flush, it's not gonna get in the way of the power pack. So now, And naturally, I'm going to have to let this dry overnight. Being that I didn't have a 1564 bit, I have a, I have a box with hundreds of drill bits in them. But it would take me all day to find it, 
And with my eyesight, I cannot read what's on a drill bit anymore, unless it's like a quarter inch or larger. Okay, so now what I want to do here is this is going on this. Can you see that? Huh? I think you can. Am I still recording? Yeah. All right. This end will be facing the shuttle. Okay. So this is how it's going to be. All right. VC, how it's going to be. We got to get these glued into place. So not a problem. We'll take care of that in a little while. But I want to put something here and something here so that this thing don't slide out. And I got to remember, it's got to be low. Low. So that it, you know, just a little something in here. We don't want to go too high, it'll hit this. All right. So the question is, no, we can't get a dowel in there. Dowel is out. So our options are limited, but not a big deal. We can't put a block in here and a block here because it's too narrow, too small. Not enough room. So the only thing left, and again, we're not going to put these in yet. We've got to put a little piece of quarter inch glue on here, a short one, and a short one over here. We'll make sure it clears. There's no problem with the power cord. We can have a, a quite a high piece here. We can even have a very high one with a slot in it for this, but we don't need to get that fussy. Uh, so, we're going to do now, my ladies and my gentlemen. And my boys and girls everywhere. What are we going to do now is we're going to put the little piece of plywood over here and over here. All right. I have pieces that are smaller than this. And it's not easy cutting this with a skill saw because it'll chop it up. It's a rough cut blade that I got on here. Okay. And um, what I usually do in a pinch is I'll use a hacksaw. I have this bar here, which is, I bought it at the yard sale a long time ago. It's actually, it's actually a saw where you, um, it's got a fine tooth on it and it's got some teeth here. And um, I got this at a yard sale, the guy did woodworking and it's a thin blade saw and it's more precise. Um, but it's still going to leave it a little raggedy. You know, raggedy Ann? You know raggedy Ann, don't you? Uh, what I need to do is to have two pieces. One inch high. When nailed to the edge of this, will become one half inch high, which will definitely clear the power inlet. You have to think of all angles of things. Uh, not very good carpentry, but um, that'll keep the power supply from sliding out. We got a couple of small brads in here, and we'll do the same on the other side here. That's our recycle guy picking up the stuff. I had to use one nail. It was coming off the edge of the plywood. I didn't have them centered. See that good, you know that. One nail and glue we should be fine. Okay. And now, with the pegs that we're going to put in here, should be fine. It's not going to come out. Okay, she's done. She's all ready. I just got to let these dry. I got masking tape in the bottom just to keep the glue from oozing out because I put quite a bit of glue in them holes. So it's going to have to sit overnight and be ready to go. That concludes this project. Thanks for watching.